Hey everyone, ML.NET 1.6 just released. In fact, if we go down to the version history, 13 hours ago it was just released. And so let's take a look at what is new here. And actually, if we go on the release notes, we just scroll through here and we see that a lot of things have been updated. And one thing to note, actually, breaking changes, there are none. Even though all these changes have went out, there are no breaking changes. So that's a really awesome thing there. All right, so I just want to go through a few of these things to kind of highlight some of the more notable changes that they did. But feel free to go through all this on your own. You might find something more interesting than I do. All right, so the first thing is we have support for ARM for ML.NET now. And it's probably more exciting part of this update. And this will allow for most training and inferencing in ML.NET on ARM architectures. And this is useful for one that a lot of people have been asking for this. Also, they've been asking for it because ARM architectures are pretty much everywhere now, included on mobile and embedded devices. So there's a lot of opportunities for ML.NET on mobile phones and IoT devices. All right, moving on, there are some uh, data frame specific enhancements and let's go down. Quite a few of them are down here. And I think one of the biggest things here is that, uh, let's see, where is it? They moved the data frame to the ML.NET repo. Now, you may remember a while back when I talked about it, this used to be in the core FX lab repository and this has actually been archived and they decided to move Microsoft had data that analysis into ML.NET which is great because .NET doesn't have much in terms of competing with pandas and Python for data analysis and uh, data cleaning uh, but the data frame API they're hoping to kind of help solve that and before they had a good amount of things that you can do you know you can uh, load CSV data do some merging joins and all that and some filters but quite a few enhancements were included in this release a couple things are uh, let's go back up here uh, they extended the group by operation so now it performs more like the link group by uh, so that's uh, helpful there because you know, C-sharp developers most of us are pretty used to link operations uh, let's see improved CSV parsing now what this is, is that they implemented a text field parser, and so that mainly helps with handling of quotes and columns. So if you have a CSV file and it has quotes inside the, the columns, it didn't really handle that very well. But after this release, it can now, so it can actually load that CSV file properly. Now let's see, if you can convert from I data view to data frame. Uh, early on in a data frame API, you could have converted from a data frame object to the I data view, so you can load the item from the data frame API and then use that data inside ML.NET. But now you can do the opposite. You can load in ML.NET and then use the data frame operations on that data afterwards. There's also some improvements to the date time when loading a CSV file for better parsing of date time data. And there's a couple of improvements to this merge and sort methods. These mainly help with null values in the data. And there's one thing to note, the data frame API is now in the ML.NET repository. We can help with some issues here. There's this Microsoft data data analysis label. You can filter down these issues and this is bunch of stuff that you can help take to kind of contribute here. Just another area that if you want to contribute to ML.NET is another way you can get started. See, back up here to the enhancements, there have been quite a few kind of code enhancements here, mainly from Feiyun here, and mostly kind of helps with the code quality and the maintenance of it, and help and kind of help you to, to read it as well. So that's, that's some good stuff. Go down a bit more, some other things I want to touch up on here. We got support for saving TensorFlow models in a saved model format. Uh, before, you can just freeze the graph and save it that way, but now... You can use this, this newer way in TensorFlow to save your model using the save model format. Now if we can specify a temp path that ML.NET will use uh, instead of just a, a default temp path, you can specify it now in the ML context uh, to use a path of you choosing. They updated LightGBM to a newer version, so this should help with any 
other algorithms that use like GBM that should help with like performance and accuracy and all that. Uh, Auto ML enhancement it offers suggestions for kind of possibly mistyping the label column name. So if you kind of mistype it, it will give you some suggestions on what the label column name will be. Quite a few build updates here. They did a lot of fixing on uh, the CI. Uh, I think a lot of tests weren't really performing very well, so they did a lot of work for that. And this means that if you do a pull request in there, you have a bit more confidence that your pull request will build and run successfully. A couple of documentation updates, updated instructions for cross-compiling on ARM, so that's helpful there. And updated the contribution file or description of help wanted tags. So just another way you can easily find issues you, you can work on. All right, so that's just a few of all other changes that went in in this release. Again, feel free to peruse this. There's a lot of stuff in here, and I, I left out a good bit of it, actually. And just curious, go ahead and put it in the comments. What was your favorite update? Was it the ARM support? Or maybe the new data frame got integrated into the ML.NET repo? Or maybe something else that I totally missed? Just put in the comments what your favorite update was. All right, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good day.